So recently I've had a few requests on customizing a main line's Hot Wheel. So what you see here is a regular main line, 99 cent Hot Wheel, plastic base, plastic tires. It's a 70 Camaro, which happens to be one of my favorite Camaros, the 70 split bumper. The paint, I actually like it. I like this design. It's a Z28 and my neighbor, his mother, used to have his Z28 almost exactly like this. So this is what we're going to use for today's custom. Although the paint is far from perfect, actually I wouldn't even call it good, I don't want to repaint this car because of the tampos. That's the main reason why. I don't have a way to reproduce them and I do like them quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and start off by protecting the paint. We're just using some blue painters tape and we're going to go ahead and just wrap the car up as best we can. And I probably went a little bit overboard, but I do not want to scratch it because we're going to put it in the vise. Now you can see I do have these rubber feet on the vise, so it's pretty well protected in the first place. First we're going to go ahead and zoom in on our camera and drill out these headlights. Yes, we're actually going to put some headlights in this. There's no particular size bit. It depends on the size hole you need and the casting. So I'm just using something that's close enough to the size of these headlight holes. Now I'm not going to be doing the turn signals, so we're going to skip those for now. And now we're going to drill out the tail lights. All four of them. Again, we're not using any particular size bit, just whatever kind of matched up to close to what I needed. Here we are in slow motion. See how slow we actually go and we speed back up. And the only reason why I speed these up is because you don't want to watch a 20 minute long video of me drilling out holes or sanding down a car. Here we are, there's the finished holes in the rear, and then we've got the ones in the front. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill out the rivet. Again, we're using our .050 bit like we always use. We're gonna drill halfway down, approximately. There's no real science to it. And then we're gonna take our larger bit and simply shear off the head of that rivet, which again, as I always mention, is not a rivet. It's actually a post that's been mushroomed out to hold that base on. We do the same thing to the front and rear. Then we take a small screwdriver, just kind of pry it in there and we should pop right off. There it goes. We may have to work the back a little bit because apparently I didn't get that one drilled far enough, but it's going to be good enough. Wiggle it a little bit and it should come right out. There's the interior and then there's the windshield, which actually you'll see is one piece. So. What I mean by that is actually the grill is part of the windshield. It's all clear. I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but if the sound quality sounds a bit off or you hear some background noises, unfortunately I'm recording this voiceover in a hotel. I travel a lot for work and it's actually Tuesday, May 22nd, so this should post tonight. It'll be kind of somewhat live. After that, we're gonna go ahead and tap our screws. This is a 256 tap. And I will have a link to that in the description below, an Amazon link. We'll have that to all of the items I use, just about. And we're using a 256 button head screw. Those will also be linked in the description below. So be sure to check those out. Now here's the interior. This is a race car of sorts. So it actually has a built-in roll bar, but you'll see it's just one long piece. We don't want the roll bar in there because we actually need the room. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. Now once we have that roll cage removed, I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the glass and then the interior just to see what it looks like. It should look just fine, and it does. Now this does only have one seat, but I'm not really that concerned with the interior, and you'll see here in a bit why. Now I did mention earlier, lights. Now this is the battery for those lights with a holder. It's a CR2032 battery. So I'm kind of putting the interior in there and seeing how it's all going to fit up, which is not well. We're going to go ahead and grind a lot off the bottom of the interior, and I mean a lot. I make this paper thin. You can almost see through it. And then we're going to actually do the same thing to the base as well. Again, not quite paper thin, but I make it pretty thin. I'm just using one of the Dremel sanding drums on this. Actually at a low rate of speed, but again it's sped up because I don't want to burn through it. And after I got as much as I could off, you can see it still doesn't fit. Boy, oh boy. 
Now here's the base after I've grinded it. You can see the outline of everything under it. That's how thin it is. And there is the interior as far as I can get them. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit more off at that interior. This is just the front portion that goes over the post. That should give me a little bit more room. So we're coming up with plan B. So this holder was part of this kit with the lights. I'm going to go ahead and desolder or remove the wires from the holder. And what we're going to do next is just solder these wires directly to the battery as you see right here. Now the only downfall is if you ever have to replace the battery, you're going to have to unsolder it and resolder it back on. But I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Now we're going to go ahead and try to place the battery. Now you can either put this in the base or wherever you'd like. If I did it over again, I would just build my own kit and use small batteries. But what I'm going to do is actually hot glue it to the bottom of the interior. So if I have to have to remove everything, it's fairly easy. I just unscrew the base and pull out the interior and then I can pop it off, resolder it and then re-glue it back in and already it fits. So that little holder was causing most of my problems. Now for the interior I'm just throwing some black paint on it real quick and then also I'm going to paint the grill. Now remember that was all clear so I'm just painting it black. Nothing special just testers black paint. And now we're going to take our pen vise I will try to put a link in the description below. You can get these on Amazon. They're awesome. They come with drill bits. I'm using some drill bits I already had, but what I'm going to do is refine those holes that we drilled earlier for the lights and tail lights. I'm going to do it by hand. We did it by drill before just to get a, a rough guess or a rough hole, and now we're doing it by hand slowly so there's no slipping of the drill, anything like that. You can see the holes are a little bit bigger, and now we're going to do the same thing to the tail lights. Now, here I'm using some drill bits I've had for years. They're hobby bits. They've got a little knurled handle on them already. If I can find those, I will be sure to link those in the description as well. They're awesome. I don't know if I can find them. We're going to go ahead and cut off the old wheels. We're just cutting the tabs. You see there, front and rear. That one just pretty much popped off by itself. And we're going to paint the base. Now we're painting this a flat black. It's actually a tester's enamel. Once we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and fill in those lights. And what I mean by that is just use our paint pen and drop some black in there so we don't see so much of that silver where the base is not finished, or the, not the base, but the actual casting. Now we're going to take our chrome pen and go ahead and paint those split bumpers because they've got to be chrome. Black is just not cutting it. Just do each one. Just take your time. you mess up you wipe it off and start over and there we go a few seconds and we've got painted split bumpers I like that we're also going to take a little bit of orange paint and paint in those front turn signals just paint them orange gives a little bit more realistic look and while we're at it since we've got the chrome pen out we're going to go ahead and chrome around the front grille Give it a little bit of contrast. It's not all just black. And I think it looks good. There's no reason to stop there. We've got the chrome pin out. Still, we're going to go ahead and paint the rear bumper chrome as well because it was chrome on the original car. And why stop there? We're going to go ahead and take that chrome pen and paint the exhaust chrome as well. We're going to take a gray pen or silver and paint the transmission, the rear transaxle or pumpkin and then also the front a-arms you also notice that i left the gas tank the body color as well as the front valence or splitter whatever you want to call it now here i'm hot gluing in the sensor for the lights now this has no switch this actually uses a magnet so you use a magnet to turn it on and off and i'm just fitting the lights here and there i've got one light going you can see they're on but i've got one in place and here we are testing it with the magnet. All kinds of different modes. Pretty neat. And that's one reason why I did use a plastic base car. First of all, I knew this was going to be difficult to fit in here. There it is all finished. But also, so the magnet would for sure work on that sensor. Now this sensor does not seem to be that consistent. So I believe with the metal base you would have a lot of problems. 
If you are interested in these lights, just do a search on Google for Hot Wheels lights and you'll be able to find them. They're not a sponsor or anything, so I'm not really plugging them. We're going to go ahead and install our wheels. Again, I got these on eBay. These are kind of unique. Um, they're metal wheels, or metal rims rather. They use a little tube, or pen rather. The tube I just inserted, you put the pen in the middle of the wheel, and you go ahead and glue the pen, and then you slide it on the axle. I've already done this one, but I'm gluing that front axle in place. Now this is not necessary depending on your custom, but if you recall, I did cut half the front of the interior on, which the front portion actually holds down the axle. And here I am inserting the other wheel, actually I'm moving on to the rear, and put a little bit of glue on the pen, push it in there, and you're in business. Now I just take uh, my X-Acto and just push it, the pen on all the way, and it does roll. Not the best roller, but it does roll. That's all that's important. Now it's time for reassembly. Luckily, taking off that holder did the trick. Put the front screw in, the back screw in, and here we are going to test it. Turn them on and off. But again, going back to the consistency, with this magnetic on-off, it doesn't seem to really do the same thing every time. If I hold it there for a couple seconds, it may come on, they may not, they may flash, they may go to brights. It just kind of varied. So they were cheap. Again, just do a search on Google for lighting up Hot Wheels. We're going to go ahead and turn the lights out. See, we got a nice little shine. All in all, I think it, the lights are great. But the next time, I will probably build them myself using two smaller batteries or one smaller battery. Or I will buy the kit that he sells with the rechargeable battery, which is much smaller. And you can also get them with the switch, which I'm sure is much more consistent. Here's all the detail on the bottom, the exhaust, the tank, pumpkin, transmission, all that. And here's the original car. Again, it wasn't bad to begin with, just lacking detail since it is a 99 cent mainline or 94 cents if you go to Walmart. But you guys wanted to see a mainline custom. So we give you a mainline custom. And if I had it to do over again, I would probably do a complete respray since this paint is not that great from the factory. And I would also use a different style wheel. Now he didn't have any other style wheels like a rally that would look perfect. And I originally purchased these with the intention on doing a custom 77 TA, which they would look perfect on. They would look more like a honeycomb, kind of. But here it is with the lights off. Nonetheless, it's pretty cool. You got a little 64 scale Hot Wheel with working lights, custom wheels, custom accents, and one of a kind. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And as always, Thanks for watching.